something very exciting. This is a highly requested video. At least two and a half people asked me about it. So today we're gonna talk about how much did it cost to rebuild the engine. So, little backstory, little history. I blew the shit up and I needed a new one. So, I got a new one, but I got it on Craigslist. So, I wanted to do kind of a, a budget build, I guess. But it was gonna be a little bit different than the typical budget build. So I was willing to spend a little bit more but still wanted to be budget-minded, we'll say. Instead of like skimping on everything, I actually did buy some stuff that I didn't really need and just to be cool and try to get friends and stuff. So we're gonna talk about it. How much did it cost me? That's what we're doing right now. So I got some cardboard and we're gonna do some shit. So the first thing that I bought was the engine. So the engine, I paid $200 for the engine. It's an LQ4. It was a complete engine, uh, came with accessories, had like the water pump, everything on it, intake, complete, with exhaust manifolds, it was complete. 200 bucks, the guy had it on Craigslist, it was originally 300, for best offer. He told me he would do it for 200. It was a low oil pressure LQ4, 200 bucks on Craigslist. I decided to take a chance on it because low oil pressure on these engines could be quite a few different things. Uh, could be a bad oil pump, could be an oil pickup tube O-ring, which is really easy. It could be a cam retainer plates, it could be the backing plate, it could be a cam bearing. It could be quite a few different things that are causing the low oil pressure. Some are easy to fix. Some are not as easy to fix. In my case, it ended up being a bad cam bearing that was causing the low oil pressure. So I needed to replace the cam bearings and I have videos on all this stuff if you guys wanna go back and check it out. I have the entire teardown and rebuild on my channel. Mine was a bad cam bearing, but I was lucky enough that it didn't spin the bearing inside the block, which is kind of strange because it was actually spinning in the block. The bearing was seized to the camshaft, but it didn't damage the block at all. So I got lucky enough that it didn't cause any damage to the block and I was able to use that existing block and put new cam bearings in it. So I put new cam bearings in it, took it to a machine shop to do it. Cam bearings are only like $30, they're really cheap, but the tools are kind of expensive. And the machine shop that I took it to only charged me $35 to do the cam bearings. So I also had the block hot tanked and cleaned. So. They charged me $75 for the whole thing, installing the cam bearings and getting the thing cleaned, which is good because there was prob there was uh, metal inside of the block. So uh, they charged me 75, but I gave the guy 80. So in my situation, I also changed the rotating assembly. I put a Gen 3 uh, crank in, a new Gen 3 crank, balanced to Gen 4 rods and pistons. So luckily I know a person that had one laying around and he was able to, he basically gave it to me. So big shout out to you, cause I know you're probably gonna watch this. So big shout out to you and thank you very much again. And he basically gave me the stuff and I just paid for shipping. So my total cost for the crankshaft and eight pistons and rods, I paid 120 for shipping. So we'll add that on there. But I would say that that 120 probably wasn't really necessary because I didn't really have to replace the rods. So I still have a set of good pistons and rods and a crank that could be cleaned up with a polish. So those I'll probably be able to sell and make my money back on. But I paid 120 for those shipped to my house. So as long as we're on crank and rods and pistons. So I ended up buying a kit that has all bearing, all the bearings and all of the piston rings. So that was a uh, hundred bucks. Unfortunately, I didn't use the rings out of it though. I used all the bearings, I didn't use the rings, so I have a complete set of Gen 3 piston rings now that I'm not using because the, the ring size is actually a little bit different. The thickness was different and I couldn't get them into the rods and I measured the with a micrometer. The sizes are different, so I didn't use those. I also decided to replace the camshaft, so I put kind of a upgraded camshaft in it it's what they call the sloppy stage two camshaft. It's a, a I got it from Jegs. So the camshaft number is 200582 if you wanna search for that. I'll put links to everything in the description also. And that was 249 that I paid for it. So basically I'll put 250, but these things do go on sale quite a bit for like 220, 230, um, possibly even cheaper than that, but they do go on sale quite a bit. And 
could get it even cheaper. I did decide to go through and replace all of the gaskets. So some of the gaskets were good. A lot of times you can reuse the gaskets, the bottom end gaskets, the head gaskets even. Uh, a lot of times you can reuse those and you're still good, but I decided just for good measure to replace all of the gaskets. So my bottom end gasket kit was 150. And that also included a, a cam retainer plate because the cam retainer plate has a little gasket on it and that's another place that can leak oil. So I decided to change that thing and found a kit that had all of it with it. So that was the bottom end kit. Also replaced the head gaskets. That was a hundred bucks for the head gaskets, brand new head gaskets. Replaced head bolts, got new head bolts, not studs, just got new head bolts. And I paid $45 shipped for a new set of Felpro head bolts. A lot of times, guys, you can use the head bolts. I know they're torque to yield bolts and you're not supposed to reuse them, but I've reused them successfully, haven't had any issues and torqued the piss out of them and it's not really a problem. The reason that I decided to change them was it didn't look like it had factory gaskets in it. So my thought was that the engine had already been gone through once and there's a chance that those were reused already. So I didn't really know the history on the bolts. So I decided to change them and it was only 45 bucks, not too bad. The issue with the other bolts that I had, they're from a later model engine. They're from a 2004. So the bolts are actually a different length. So I didn't use those and I way over torqued them and way over boosted the engine. So I didn't want to use those. I also paid, we'll say 50 bucks for a ball hone, like a flex hone to hone the cylinders. I didn't have the machine shop do that, but I did buy a hone, which is a tool. So I consider that more of an investment because I can use it again later. But I did buy that thing just for this project because I wanted to hone the cylinders good and get those things cleaned out and make sure that everything was peachy. So moving on to the heads, I did do some new valve springs, PAC 1218 valve springs, because this is a turbo build. So I wanted to kind of do like the camshaft and the valve springs. It's more generated towards the turbo and I was gonna do that stuff anyways. So I'm glad I blew the engine up before I swapped all that stuff because I wrecked pretty much everything in the engine. The camshaft was junk. So I'm glad I wrecked the stock camshaft before I bought a new one and then wrecked it. So the valve springs, those are 135. And those are the uh, PAC 1218 valve springs. And along with the valve springs, I also did new valve seals. So that was, I wanna say that was like $20 or something like that. I reused all of the lifters. I reused all the lifter trays, reused all of the push rods, um, used the oil pan off of the engine. I used my old block off plate that I had, the oil block off plate from my old engine. I reused a lot of stuff. Use, my, use the old injectors. I did end up getting a new intake, a different intake. So my situation, I'll add this one on there. I paid 40 bucks for a different intake because the intake that I have, it was completely loaded with metal from when I blew the other one up. And the one that came with the engine was from a different year. It was from a 2001 and the 2001s have the EGR tube in it. And I just wanted one that matched mine. So I got one from a 2002 and that was good to go. So that's kind of another optional cost. You might not really have to do that if you bought a low oil pressure engine, but I did. So that's pretty much everything. Let's see what the total cost is. If we want to get like really, really picky on cost here. So I also cleaned everything and I painted it. So I bought a jug of mineral spirits and like two bottles of dish soap. So the jug of mineral, mineral spirits was 15. And I think the little bottles of dish soap were like $1.70 each, so like four bucks. So I used some five gallon buckets and basically cleaned all of the, the parts, like the heads and the valve covers and everything that I could fit in the buckets, even the oil pan a little bit, uh, with the mineral spirits and dish soap and water combination. And that worked very well, but it was additional cost. So I think I paid probably, we'll say like another eight bucks for the paint. So I got some of that fancy garbage that you spray on and it turns the rust into primer and then you paint over it. So I did that stuff and then I put some gloss black paint over that. So I did do the, the painting and the cleaning. So we'll add that on as a cost. I did reuse the oil pump from the low oil pressure engine and haven't had any issues with it yet. 
All right, so let's talk about parts that I have left over now, because I usually like to talk about how much it costs to build it and then what you still have left that you can sell and make your money back. So I still have, after this project, I have two intakes uh, with throttle bodies. So that could maybe go for like another 75 to 100 bucks a piece. So we'll say another 150 if I were to sell both the intakes after I clean the other one. I have a full set, a good set of Gen 3 rods and pistons with rings. So it depends where you look. Sometimes you can get them really cheap, but sometimes on the high side, they go for like $100. That's like if you're looking on eBay or whatever. A lot of times you can get them cheaper than that, but that's on the high side. I do have a good crankshaft, so you could maybe get like another, what we'll say 50 bucks for the crankshaft. It would need to be polished but it's still serviceable, still usable. I have another flex plate. I'm just gonna say 25 for the flex plate. I have a full set of injectors, factory injectors. Maybe we'll say 20 bucks for that. I got, if you really wanted to be a little risky, you could reuse the head gaskets, reuse the head bolts. I'm not going to add any cost for those. I do have a full set of rockers and a full set of push rods. I don't know, maybe like 30, 40 bucks. Maybe that's on the little high side, but a lot of this stuff I'm just going to keep and reuse it because if, I, if something goes bad, I'll have the stuff just laying around and it's kind of nice to have. So we'll just pretend and we'll take some of that cost off just to kind of reference it. So let's see what we got for a total. All right, guys, so yeah, the total, the total that I got is... 1317 so about 1300 bucks to rebuild the whole engine that's actually kind of a lot more than i thought it was when i was doing the math in my head i thought it was uh closer to like 900 to a thousand so i guess i spent more than i thought essentially this is a fresh rebuild engine so it's not really like a great brand new engine but if you're talking about buying an LQ4 engine that's complete a lot of times from the junkyard you're looking at the 12 to 1500 dollar range depending where you go I found my first one for 500 but some guys are out there spending like 12 13 1400 bucks for for these kind of engines so I wouldn't really say 13 is that bad with fresh bearings and gone through, everything's gone through, the rings are gapped properly, I gapped all the rings for boost, and cleaned the block and basically started over, started fresh with it. So I don't really think that that's too bad overall, especially considering I did put a $250 camshaft in it and put different springs in it, so everything is kind of freshened up. So even right there, if you were just talking about just doing a rebuild, because you could throw this engine in their stock and still make a, a shitload of power on it, even if you did turbo it, you know, take another three, four hundred dollars off for the camshaft and the springs and stuff, and you're back down in that nine hundred dollar range. So you're you're still kind of in a pretty decent spot. If you look on the other side of the list and the potential that we have to sell this stuff, uh, we're looking at you know, over another $300. So if you were to take that off of the cost, your 1300 would right away come down to 1000 And then if you took the camshaft and the springs out of that, you're back down to maybe like another 700 The price that you could probably do this rebuild for, if you didn't upgrade anything and you sold all the parts, you could probably do it for 600 bucks which is a really good deal for an LQ4 and it would be completely freshened up and good to go. So guys, probably took a little bit longer than expected. That's my little spiel. That's what I paid. That's what you could do it for. There's definitely more corners you could cut on it too if you wanted to reuse head bolts, reuse head gaskets, and you know, there's a lot of other stuff that you could do to make it cheaper. So this is just kind of what I did what you could possibly do it for if you sold the parts or didn't do the upgrades. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, smash the like button. And if you would be so kind, share this video with some of your friends. Hopefully they'll like it too. It really helps me. I appreciate the support and it really helps this channel grow. So thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I don't blow this thing up. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.